Hello everyone. This is Steve from Crooked, Crooked Tree Woodworking. And as some of you have who have subscribed to my channel got to hear that many of my students, my carving students, asked me to start making some of these videos, so I'm trying. And the first ones I did were a couple simple things, like a simple Santa carving that it's a workshop that I teach around Christmas time. So I recorded that, posted it on YouTube, <clears throat> only to find out that, man, there's a whole bunch of other ones. So I started looking around. I don't want to keep doing things that other people are doing. And I thought back to what started me carving. And you're kind of looking at it right here. My carving all kind of began in the Boy Scouts and the Cub Scouts. And a lot of it was neckerchief slides. Now, I have neckerchief slides that were store-bought. There's a couple from the Shikalemi Scout Reservation where I worked as a lifeguard on the lake, canoeing and rowing. <coughs> Pardon me. There are some other store-bought ones here. But there are a lot that I carved. This one was an early carving. Some of these are more recent. My nephew's a scout now, and I've been carving neckerchief slides with him. And some are really simple. And I think that might be a better video for me to do. Some silly ones. We used to get these off the Coke canisters. You could slip your, slip your neckerchief slide, neckerchief down each side of that, and make it a neckerchief slide. My nephew's kind of nuts about Doctor Who, so there's a tortoise. But anyway, there's all kinds of things out there. Used to be, and I don't know if you can, still can, buy these. These are old. These have been around. And I'm pretty sure that I'm not going to carve them because I don't know if they're still for sale or if you can get them. The other thing that was really cool, and I've kind of come to be on a mission is to start carving the slide of the month. Boys Life Magazine, every year has to, used to have, uh, every month, in Boys Life Magazine, there used to be a slide of the month by Whitling Jim. I think his real name was Ben Hunt or something like that, and he has some books. But I'm on kind of a mission to try and carve or recreate as many of those as I possibly can. Actually, there is a slide that, that was a store-bought slide. It's resin that I just painted when I was on the lake staff up at Shikalemi. So, I want to do some really, really simple slides. I think it's important. That's, the simple things is where you get started. Too many people want to start woodworking and carving and they want to start with really big outrageous projects and they don't understand the process yet. So what my thought is I want to work with some materials that you can get while you're away on a camp out. And you can even start to create the slides while you're on the camp out. Some of the things that you'll have to do like drill the hole, you might have to come home from camp. You probably won't have a drill or the tools to use to, to drill while you're at camp. But we're just going to take a branch and make some really simple neckerchief slides. And as I make these videos, I'll continue on and get them a little more complicated, a little more detailed, and a little more involved as we go. The tools that we should wind up having to use, and I've been looking for it, I can't find it. Um, your Boy Scout knife. Don't have to go out and buy outrageous knives or anything crazy, although a good carving knife isn't very expensive. If you're going to carve, you should probably get one. Some branches that you cut from a tree. Now these will be green if it's a live tree, and that will carve a little easier, but it also presents a few problems. As it dries, 
Those straws, those little veins that carried nutrients of water and moisture to the tree, they begin to lose that moisture and the wood begins to shrink. And if it doesn't shrink evenly, it will crack or check. We'll talk about that a little bit. So we're just gonna use some branches, either deadfall or maybe a branch off a tree so that you don't really damage the tree too much. Um, some pruning doesn't hurt a tree. You'll need maybe something to measure with, but maybe not. And eventually you'll need a drill with a drill bit. Five eighth of an inch seems to be a really good size uh, hole for a neckerchief slide. So you'll probably want to drill somewhere in the neighborhood of a five eighth inch hole. Half inch is too small. Three quarters seems to be a little bit too big. And when I started carving, we didn't have things like this Kevlar glove, but you really should have one of those so you don't hurt yourself. And I'm in the shop, so I'm gonna use one of my hand saws, but when you're at camp, you should have a camp saw, or someone would probably have a camp saw, a bow saw, and you can do the same thing there. Harvest your branch, and then cut it to length. And these two branches I have here will make a lot of neckerchief slides. So anyway, I'm going to try and get started with this telephone on a tripod here and hopefully you'll be able to see what I do from here. Once I go around the other side I can't really tell what's going on. To start, we're going to go with the branch and measure about an inch and a half to two inches. Not critical, but an inch and a half slide is more than long enough. <coughs> if you make it too big, <coughs> it won't hold well in your neckerchief and you'll lose it. How, and when you're out of camp and you don't have a foot rule, how do you tell an inch and a half? Well, most people, of course, a younger scout, this won't hold true for, but this part of your finger is roughly about an inch. And that holds true for almost everyone. So put your finger there and just go a little bit more. The length isn't terribly critical. While you're out at camp, just put this on a stump or something that's going to hold it firmly. And use your camp saw and saw it off at that point. Now the way this camera is set up, to my weak side. I'm not a left-hander, but I'm going to saw with my left hand anyway. Let's see how we do. It's something I practice off and on, being a carpenter, earning my living as a carpenter for a living. Sometimes you do have to reach in and saw by hand with your non-dominant hand. So, that didn't go too So. We have our piece cut off for the slide. You can put the branch away and save it for other slides, or you can cut a couple pieces while you're at it. I'm going to put it in a vise here. And this is the part that you may wind up having to do at home, unless for some reason you have in your camp kit a drill or a brace and an auger. I'm going to put the bit and the drill directly above and try and line it up plumb or straight with the piece and drill down into it. Take your time. And try to make sure that you're following along with the piece. Occasionally have to pull the bit out, clean off, and go back and do a little more. When you get to the other side, the point starts to come through. And it's a pretty good idea, not as critical in a piece where you're drilling in the end grain, 
but when you do other drilling across the grain, it's a good idea to come from both sides. That way, the bit won't all, all at once break through and chip out your piece. From here, you can begin to make your slide. Start with the large blade and just, oh, and your glove. Where can you get these gloves? Well, a lot of the woodworking stores sell them, but if you have a restaurant supply, uh, store or a restaurant supplier in your town, they all have them because the chefs use them when they carve meat and the butchers use them. But what I'm doing, I, we call this a paring cut. I'm just pinching my fingers together. I know normally you wouldn't cut towards yourself and you're really not, but this is very controlled. You have a lot of strength in your grip. Just light cuts. And since this is green wood, it's cutting rather easily. Then we'll chamfer the inside as well so that your neckerchief will slide down in there easily. Just give it a little chamfer or a little taper. Later, you will want to sand this and smooth it even further. If you can see down in there, there's some hairs. I don't know if you can see better that way. You can take the knife and just go around like this to clean that up. Much of that will clean up a little bit better as you dry the piece. But then the same thing to the other side. And I might not take this little piece where a branch came out. I kind of like the look, look of those things. This happens to be a piece of sassafras. I love to work in sassafras. The smell and the aroma that it creates as you work with it. It's very, very aromatic, very good smelling, an herbal sort of, sort of smell. And it works pretty nice. The grain's fairly tight, so it holds detail well. And there you have it. At this point, you actually created your first slide. There would be nothing the matter with using this. This would make an attractive slide. But I'm going to use this one piece of branch and do several different slides for you. I'm going to, going to do it in a series of videos. Uh, let's call this video today Introduction to Scout Neckerchief Slide Carving or slide carving. But if you want to take it a step further, take your big knife and we're going to use a paring cut again, the big blade in your knife, and just come in a little bit like this, about halfway through. I'm starting about a quarter inch from the top and kind of hollowing to the center. Quarter inch from, I guess that's the bottom, but it seems like the top since I turned it around and hollowing to the center, I'm taking a bit of the bark off and exposing the sapwood. I'm going to flatten this off a little bit. I'm pushing straight in here now. We're going to call those stop cuts, and then I'll go over to the stop cut to clean that out. Stop cut again, go over and clean that out. Stop cut here, go over and clean it out again.
now we have kind of a bare spot in it. What you can do in that bare spot, it, there's all kinds of things. But let's start with your troop or your pack number. My old troop is 238. There's several ways you can put this number in here. Numbers can sometimes be a little bit difficult to carve because there are so many curves. The only numbers that don't have a lot of curves in them are the number one and the number seven. I'm going to open this up a little bit more. I was kind of crowding my eight. Again, what a great way to get started. An attractive little slide that's not very difficult. You're going to learn your knife cuts. You're going to learn how the wood works. You're going to develop some eye-hand coordination, some visualization skills. It's sometimes hard to work from a drawing like what we see in the slide of the month. So we'll get those numbers on there. Remember, keep it simple to start. Your skills will build. I can't emphasize that enough. So we have my old troop number and Cub Scout pack number as well. I was scout leader at a another troop and pack and that was 236 and I still help them today I switched to the smaller blade and what I'm going to do now is just take the tip and just do a V cut just lightly I'm going to go over and I'm going to come back the other direction and I'm going to peel just a little piece out now, when I'm doing that, to enlarge it and make it a little more understandable, if this is the surface of the wood that you're cutting into, you want to make your knife go on an angle, a shallow angle, and cut that way, then bring the knife back this way on a shallow angle, and the important part is to make those cuts meet at the bottom so that it lifts this chip out. Too many guys when they first start, guys and gals, when they first start, they know that their line is here and they want to cut it, but they put the knife in straight and cut down, and they put the knife in straight and cut down, and that makes a groove, and actually that's really all you have to do to get the number in. But if it doesn't meet at the bottom, it can't lift this piece of wood out. The knife has to come on an angle, and you're taking a triangle of a piece of wood out. So I have the bottom of the two out. Again, I'm kind of using the paring cut. I'm holding the block, but I'm, I'm using my thumb as a steady rest, holding the knife all, across all my fingers this time now to go around. I'm trying to do a little patching in this video. I realized that when I watched it, it wasn't very visible what I was doing when I was carving the numbers. Anyway, I hold the knife across with my fingers all the way across like that and my thumb up here and I use the very tip of the knife to do the carving and create that V cut. things like the three I put the tip in and I just kind of follow around while turning the block a little earlier uh, earlier I likened it to cutting with the scissors and a piece of paper then I point the other direction 
and I plant my thumb, my thumb helps hold and push against my other hand and keeps me steady. When you carve, you're going to find you always want two or three points of contact to help you carve. And clean out any hairs. Here's the number eight, and that's a difficult one because it's a complete circle. Just like number nine has a complete circle, number six has a complete circle. Of course, the zero is a complete circle. But I just use that tip and lift out V cuts. When I can, I follow around and try and get one nice long wedge out. I think I talked a little bit about drying. And I'm not sure what all I talk since I'm patching some things back in. But since this is a wet piece of lumber, you want to make it, you want to dry it. And it does run the risk of cracking or checking, like I said earlier. One way to do that is if you have a place that's maybe a little cooler or damp. A lot of times basements, I know my basement's a little cooler, a little damper. I can put the piece down there and just let it dry slowly. And that's the key. You want it to dry slowly and equally. It's when it dries unequally that those splits and those checks occur. You do have one advantage, one thing going for you. Since you drill the center out, it can drill from it can dry from the inside as well as the outside. The other thing you can do if mom and dad let you do it is take it and put it in the microwave for short periods of time. Like put it in the microwave for 30 seconds, bring it out, and let it dry. Let it cool down. Then the next day, do the same thing. You could probably do it several times in one day, but take your time. So anyway, once you have your numbers cut out, you're pretty much finished. You have a nice neckerchief slide that didn't take a lot of work. It's very attractive. And you could do it while you were at camp without a whole lot of tools. Now, should you want that number to jump out just a little bit more, you could take some stain. This is some early American. It's a darker stain. It doesn't have to be early American. It could be almost anything. Walnut, special walnut, red mahogany. But take some stain and rub it onto your piece. It's usually going to stay a little darker down in the groove where you cut the numbers. Rub a little stain in there and that brings it out just a little bit more. You can sometimes get up some darker stuff from the bottom or from the lid, darken those grooves a little more and wipe wipe carefully across the top and let a little bit more in. It brings it out just a little bit more. I'm saying a little bit more, a whole lot. But after it's dried then, you'll want to put some kind of clear finish on to seal the bark and keep it intact. You can use oil. Here's a Danish oil, but linseed oil works well. Polyurethane. Lack varnish, or you can use some lacquer, some spray lacquer. But anyway, there it is a nice, attractive neckerchief slide. The other thing you want to make sure to do is sign it and date it. As you progress in carving, it's good for you to look back at the work that you did a year ago, two years ago. And signing and dating 
is an important part of that. When you see the progress you made, a year from now when you're carving, look back at some of the things you did a year ago and see how much progress, see your progression, see what you did, see how much better you got. And you'll be impressed. It's very motivational. Don't compare your carving work to someone else's. Compare your work to your own work. So there's your neckerchief slide. If what I did was helpful, and I hope it was, I'm going to continue to do these. So subscribe to my channel. I'm going to call this one Introduction. The next one will be number one in the series of, of neckerchief slides. And we're going to do easy ones to start, and I'm going to progress into some others. Hopefully maybe do some of the Whittling Gym from uh, Slide of the Month from Boy's Life and some of my other ideas. But carving slides, trading slides, trading patches, you can make your own patrol slide. 